It's the KSO show after another win. K State goes to 3 and 0 after taking down Nevada inside Bill Snyder Family Stadium. A 3 and 0 that K State can feel really good about uh through comp- uh, non-conference play. They sweep that slate and now they get ready for conference play against Oklahoma State next week. But here we are here to talk about the K State Nevada game with Jimmy Goheen and Chris Nelson. Um, that's also KSU underscore fan is Jimmy on Twitter and on the KSO boards. And Chris Nelson is uh, Nelson. Uh, what is it? Under- <laughs> you always get it wrong. It's like yeah, Nelson KSO underscore, underscore Nelson. KSO underscore Nelson official. Yeah, I love it. I um, believe so. So, yes, thank you guys for joining me as always. Always love to do this podcast with you guys, especially this week. I think it should be one of the more fun ones because, um, you know, it was a really solid Nevada team that, got, that they got the win over. So, first, you know, before we really break down the plays and everything, I'll start with you, Jimmy. Overall, you know, um, your feelings after a, a really, you know, solid 38-17 to 17 victory over the Wolfpack. I, I was extremely impressed. I I think I picked in the summer during my preview, I think I picked 38, 34 for this game. And then I still picked this to win because I couldn't be like the rest of you guys on KSO and pick against K state. Um, But I still picked this to win. I, but I did not think it would be a 21 point margin by any means. I thought it'd be a much tighter game might come down to the last possession of the fourth quarter for whoever had the ball last kind of deal. And, uh, you know, K-State really stepped up both offense, defense, special teams was good enough, not great. And uh, pretty pretty decisive win and pretty impressive win in my book. And I, I still think Nevada is a really good team. Um, it seems like some people, even our own fans, are kind of downplaying them after we beat them. But I still think that's one of the top five group of five teams out there in the land this year. I think I agree. And um... – Nelly, both you guys, Nelly and Fan, picked pick K State, whereas me, Drew, and DY all picked against the Cats. Um, and it was a simple reason why. I think if Skyler was playing, it probably would have been a clean sweep of uh, five, you know, K State picks from all of the KSO staff. But you guys got it right. We got it wrong. Will Howard did what he needed to do. We even saw some Jaron Lewis in the game. But I say let's get into the game, and I'll start with Nelly on that first drive. Really fun to see how quickly um, things came together. Will Howard, it was a two-play, you know, two-play 75-yard drive that started with a Will Howard seven-yard run to set things up. And then right after that, uh, the the longest K-State pass of the game for a touchdown, 68-yard bomb to Daniel Matterbebe. His only reception of the game goes for 68 yards and a stiff arm into the end zone. What was that like, Nelly? Well, ironically enough, yeah, that, that first play was a, a QB run that, that Howard made a really good cut on, um, and it was well blocked as well, but he, but he made a nice cut to, to get six or seven yards. And, and after that first play, I turned to you guys and said, man, if this game turns into a game where, you know, it, I joked Adam Helm right and Adam Helm left, going back to the Bill Snyder 1.0 days, where, where we ran the QB a lot in some, in some of the games. I said, oh, I'm okay with that as long as we get a W. And very next play, bam, we hit him with a big one. Um, so, great. And, again, that's another game where, where Mess has, has dialed up something for the first drive to get us off to a quick start. It sure was exciting. Got the juices flowing. And then after that, the defense kept, uh, you know, doing what they do best on the next drive, forcing Nevada to punt. Um, and, I mean, yeah, I, another really dominating performance from this defense, especially against a, a guy like Carson Strong who made some really tough plays. But, Jimmy, after K-State, you know, forces a three and out with Nevada, up seven after Howard with a nice strike, unlike anything we saw from the week before, um, you know, that far downfield, how are your feelings after this and what are you seeing in the game? Yeah, to, to get – to get to hold them to three and out was really really impressive, and and I just go I'll just go back to Mata Bebe's catch real quick. I finally saw the pre the the uh, just watched it on uh, reviewing the game, and they finally showed one angle that was kind of ground level from the end zone, and I talked 
the first week about uh, Brooks Stimmen is right in the corner. Um, that was the first pick of the season. And Amada Bebe, it was a simple stem on his route, but he stemmed and made that safety look foolish. Um, stemmed like he was going to go outside and run a, run a corner route and then came back in on the post, or almost a skinny route down the middle, and was wide open. But just you can see that the angle from that they showed on the ESPN Plus broadcast, he completely turned the safety's hips to the outside. And, and you watch it from the sideline view that we all saw from the top, like in the booth, and he was wide open. You wonder, man, how did he get that wide open? But it was really his route weren't running. And then, like you said, the three and out to set the tone of the game. And, you know, they gained one yard total on that first drive um, before we, we forced them to punt. No, it's four yards total. That was really, really impressive to, to get a stop right away and just kind of show um, that we were gonna that we were gonna be there to 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 make this a game. It wasn't gonna be um, a back and forth type of game, and and we kind of set the tone that we were gonna be able to defend what what many people think is the NFL quarterback. And then Nelly, the the offense kind of stalled out for the next few drives and really the rest of the first quarter because uh, the next score was Nevada late in the first quarter, right before you know the turn of the quarter and it was a eight play 74 yard drive for Nevada what happened um on that on that drive Nelly for K-State to give up 74 yards to really a solid offense yeah I mean I, I don't think there's anything necessarily the defense did poorly I mean they're playing a good offense that that you're not going to shut out um and they're able to make a couple plays and certainly Carson Strong um you know, this wasn't the drive that he converted the third and long. That was the in the third quarter. But, you know, he made a couple of big-time throws, and, and that's going to happen in a game like that. And then, um, yeah, so that was the first quarter where basically it started with K-State getting the first touchdown. Nevada punt, K-State punt, Nevada punt, K-State punt. Then Nevada touchdown at the end of the quarter. Um, and, you know, you have a tie game at this point. Um, but K-State. First play, you know, or first drive, basically going into that second quarter, gets it done. Um, it's a eight play, seventy five yard drive. Another, you know, nice long drive. F but at the helm of the quarterback at this stage of the game was Jaron Lewis. Interesting. They switched out quarterbacks. Will Howard had not done anything wrong. He hadn't thrown any picks. He hadn't fumbled the ball. Um, no turnovers. And, but and he also had a really nice first drive. Things stalled the couple drives after that in the first quarter. Um, you know, we kind of heard Jaron Lewis before the game was going to get some go. Sure enough, I didn't think it was going to be this quick, but this quick second quarter gets him going. Wasn't perfect from Jaron Lewis, Jimmy, but he does move the ball down the field. I think did get some help from a, a penalty on that drive, if I'm not mistaken. So what did you see on that, that drive from Jaron Lewis and his first, you know, action as a K-State Wildcat? Well, they, they, I mean, they played it pretty safe, really safer than they did with Will Howard. He only had um, two pass, three pass calls the whole time he was in the, in the two drives Jaron Lewis play, played. Um, we ran 17 plays, gained 110 yards, scored 10 points. So it's hard to complain about that. Pretty good success rate. We ran a couple of bubble screens to, uh, to Brooks with Jaron Lewis, and then uh, we did have one play action that was incomplete. Um, but then we mixed in kind of a, a, some of our staple, um, some power run, inside zone, which is, you know, I, I clarified on Twitter today that what we run is actually a duo blocking scheme, which is is more of a power gap scheme without a puller, which makes more sense giving our, our coaching staff. I finally, it's hard to see from the, in, or from the sideline. And then I, you know, I finally put two and two together and, and made sense that we really run a duo blocking scheme, not not necessarily inside zone all the time. Regardless, that's kind kind of our staple is 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 that scheme, and and we we do a lot of a lot of uh, good things with it. And you know, we had some big runs um, with it as we went through those two. That really that second quarter um, when Jaron Lewis took over, and and I and I I really like the decision of the staff to give him a couple drives. I mean, they they pretty much said in post game that he's been playing well enough that he deserved a chance, and it wasn't. But they didn't trust Will Howard and, and didn't think he couldn't play. But um, I appreciate the staff giving Lewis a shot. And I appreciate Lewis kind of taking 
taking advantage of it. And, you know, I'll take 10 points and two drives um, from a quarterback leading the offense any day. So I was pretty pleased with what he did and how he played as he came in. And um, hopefully, I don't know, I, I'm sure we'll see something similar, I'm guessing, against Oklahoma State where we play Lewis a couple of drives and, and give him a chance. But I, I like it. I don't, I don't hate it. Yeah, you know, Lewis didn't make any mistakes, um, and the running backs really got going. Nelly, if you had anything to add to that, it looked like you might want to say something. If not, or it might might have just been you just making a face. But I, I can't tell with you here, Nelly. You, you just got that face that just says you want to talk. I don't know what it is. But, <laughs> but yeah, Joe Irvin, Deuce Vaughn got things going on that drive, and then Joe Irvin capped it off with that 22 yard run for a touchdown um and lewis didn't make any mistakes which was key next drive nelly is when t denson picks up an interception i believe his second interception of his career um what happened and then and then you know he got a unsportsmanlike for throwing up the mob and stuff but <laughs> how about how about that drive it was a nine play 23 yard drive for nevada until t denson picked it off I think the number of plays and the yards, the yards there, there. Says, says a lot about the defense. Um, you know, again, they gave up some completions, but the way they rallied to the football after they have all year is, is remarkable. And I don't know what the number of yards after catch that they've given up this year, but it, it seems pretty small. I mean, every time there's a completion, it feels like there's not only one, but two or three guys there to make a tackle. And so for them to only gain 23 yards in, in nine plays is, is, you know, a lot of credit to the defense of keeping um, the place in front. They got the big one the series before. Um, they prevented that. And then on the interception, um, they did a nice job of getting some pressure. And while they didn't get home on the pressure, they, they forced Carson Strong off his spot and ha made him go through second, thir third reads. And I think he, he tried to force one and, and make a good throw. And, and T. Denson came up with the pick. And it was an awful call on the, on the unsportsman. Like, I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree. I agree completely. But Nelly, I will. I do want to come right back to you again because um, uh, Jared Lewis was thrown out there again after that interception and, you know, led it led them down 10 play yard, 38 yard drive uh, for the first field goal of the game for K-State. But what did you think when Jared Lewis got the first go um, and didn't make any mistakes and actually was scoring some points? So I, I do believe, um, I mean, I'll give credit to him. He didn't do anything to, to hurt the team, but I think that's really when the offensive line started to exert their dominance. I mean, in the play or in the draft before, Irvin ripped off runs at 12 and 22, and Deuce had a 13-yard run. And then in that next drive, Deuce had runs of 13 and 12, and Irvin had a nine-yard run. So in those two drives, in the fourth and fifth drives of the game, K-State averaged over 7.5 yards per carry. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, Lewis didn't do anything poorly. Uh, I'll give him credit on the one throwaway that, that drew the penalty on Knowles. I believe he was throwing that away on purpose, and so I'll give him credit for that. But certainly the O-line and the running backs took over that game for those two series. And then, Jimmy, just the domination from this defense in the first half, only allowing seven points for Nevada, um, you know, before we flip over to that second half and, and talk about that. How impressive – again was this defense against you know just a gunslinger who who is very accurate in Carson Strong who made some really tough throws yeah that that first half we held them to to just over four and a half yards per play 1.4 points uh points per drive and a 38 percent uh 39 percent success rate so anytime you have numbers like that against any offense you're playing pretty well but against what um an offense that had been uh, averaging nearly seven yards per play, 3.21 yards per drive coming into that game. That's pretty impressive to take to take them and basically cut those numbers in half or less, um, especially on points per drive. So I was super impressed with the defense at halftime. I thought, you know, we had them kind of where we wanted them. We, you know, had, had turned them over once, which, you know, um, Strong had thrown very few turn interceptions in his career. Um, I think Cole Manback, on the pregame Firecat game day pointed out he had one of the lowest interception rates per pass in the country and better than all the guys that were drafted in the first round last year as quarterback. So dude, dude makes really good decisions and, and 
throws good balls. And so to pick him off even once in this game was pretty impressive from our defense. And then in the second half, you see uh, an offense that stalls again in, in the third quarter, but also needs to be pointed out that the time of possession in that quarter for K-State was – um, you know, not very conducive. And late in the quarter, they started to move the ball and they finally got points um, late in the quarter. But that was after Nevada had tied it up with a field goal and touchdown themselves in that third quarter. So, Nelly, um, I guess uh, what happened coming out of half for K-State to allow Nevada to get back into it and tie the game at 17? Um, Carson Strong decided to make a couple of NFL throws. <laughs> Plain and simple. I mean, on the defensive side of the ball, that's what happened. I mean, they come out, uh, first play of the second half, strong has completion, but again for zero yards because we're rallying to the football. We get a sack on second down to set up third and 20, and he throws an absolutely dime between three guys in a window that was so small. And I, I don't think it's hyperbole, hyperbole to say that no other quarterback that they face this year will be able to make that throw. That was a big time throw. Um, the touchdown throw was was a great throw as well on, on the slant route. Um, you know, you could say Brent's got beat, but he was in pretty good position, and it took a really good throw to for the touchdown on the next drive. So, yeah, I, again, the guy made plays. Give credit to him. And we didn't see Jaron Lewis the rest of, you know, any of the second half. Um, they stuck with Will Howard. Howard, um, which ended up being the right decision, especially in the fourth quarter. But Howard on the first drive of the second half, um, was a three and out, didn't get a lot going, um, incomplete pass. And that was the incomplete pass to Nick Lenners, which was an int- uh, w- which was opposite side of the field play that they actually went, ran for a matter of Bay Bay earlier in the, the, um, in the game, obviously the touchdown pass two plays in. So Jimmy, was that, was that, a, was that this exact same route on the opposite side of the field? And what happened there was Lenners off or was Howard off or, or where was the miscommunication there? Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming um, – my assumption is is compared to where um, the ball was thrown, that Leonard's was a little bit off. I think this the route was a little bit different. The first time they were stacked as a tight end and H the same way, Leonard's ran a little curl and Vaughn ran a kind of a, a, a flat route outside of it. And Armada Bebe ran the the post route to get open. Second time, I haven't wa- rewatched it yet, but Leonard's was on the, the post route. And I think it was supposed to be the same stem outside come back in based on where um, the safety was because the, the Nevada safety was, again, outside Leonard's on the route. So you got to stem that, come back inside. And I think Howard was assuming that route uh, was going to be run similar way by Leonard's and, and made the throw to the spot where only he was going to be able to catch it and miss on it. Notice the, the other thing to note on that was the, the, the other two plays were quarterback runs, which um, were both kind of sniffed out by um, one of them was out of the diamond formation like we ran early in the game, the first play, in fact. And then the other one was another quarterback run out of empty where we motioned uh, Vaughn into the backfield. So, And we hadn't run a quarterback run since the first quarter uh, – and the sixth play of the game. So we never ran a quarterback run with, with uh, Lewis in the game. And then uh, we came out in the second half running quarterback run and a nice play action pass concept. So I like the concept. It just, when, when execution doesn't happen and you go three and out, you're always going to yell at the offensive coordinator. That's just part of the deal. That's part of the job. And I think really that was more execution errors um, than, than poor play calling. Uh, and then the rest of the half, we were just ridiculously efficient and scored three touchdowns and had a, a, a success rate on offense over 80%. So um, the last three drives of the half, we got things turned around after Nevada tied the game. So I'll give credit where credit's due. And, and one note I would like to make on that third down play um, where we ran the, the quarterback out of empty, um, we came back. We even though that play wasn't successful and nobody likes that, especially when you run on third and long, but we came back to that same look later in the game where we handed it off to Deuce a couple of times out of empty on jet. And that's something we hadn't done yet this year. And Deuce got quite a bit of yardage on that play. So credit to the staff again for recognizing, all right, they took the QB run out of it or away. So, so let's come back to it and hand it to Deuce. 
Yeah, exactly. Good point, Nelly. And you made the point earlier, Nelly, about how this, you know, Carson Strong made some NFL throws. This third quarter was full. Of, they almost had it for almost 10 minutes um, of, of offense. So that was really um, a efficient, you know, drives for Nevada, except the defense did good by holding them to a field goal that first drive, which really made a difference in the, you know, the scheme of what this game could have looked like. This defense really buckling down. And then late in the quarter, like you said, Jimmy, we got things rolling. Um, and later in the half, Will Howard had a big run on this touchdown drive, eight play, 75 yards. Um, he had a 19 yard uh, run that was big, a nice 16 yard pass to Deuce Vaughn that set up the run um, and a pass to Brooks as well. And then Deuce Vaughn run. So, yeah, just take me through this drive and, and tell me what you saw on a nice eight play 75 yard drive where they ate up the clock themselves finally and had it for four, four minutes and 15 seconds. Well, I mean, the biggest thing was we answered when they tied the game. So, I mean, it, it really to, to step up and, and find a way to make plays in that situation when you're down, like you said, um, you know, Howard did make a nice pass um, on, on a drop back throw. Uh, for 16 yards, a big 19-yard run on quarterback run, um, and then to, and finish it off with with a nice run on duo again with the uh, do off jet sweep, which is you know kind of become one of our st staple plays, and uh, the, to to finish that off and and really become efficient. The first play was a, a zero-yard run, and then after that everything else was six yards or more. So um, on that drive, so. They really got it, you know, some things corrected from maybe what they saw. You know, Nevada obviously made adjustments at halftime, stuffed us three and out the first drive, and then K-State readjusted. And, and like we talked about in the first half, um, and like Nelly pointed out, and at once Lewis came in, the, the offensive line re-exerted their dominance of the Nevada front seven and really just, you know, controlled the rest of the game by controlling the game up front. And that was really, to me, the story of the second half is – once our offensive line took over and Nevada had no shot, and then our defense stepped up and, and stopped them the rest of the game too. Absolutely. Lando, can I make one yep. point about that drive? Yes, please. Always speak up with me, Nelly. Come on. Yeah, to me, the biggest play of the game, by far not even close, oh, yeah. occurred, yes. occurred on that drive on second down, the, the swing pass to Deuce Vaughn. Um, you know, you, you look at the momentum of that game. Nevada gets the open kick off the second half, gets a field goal. We go three and out with a somewhat ugly drive. We shank a punt. They go down and score. It's a tied game. We get stopped for no gain on first down. So we're staring at second and 10. We swing out the deuce, and there's two guys there to tackle him for no gain. If they bring him down, we're sitting at third and 10 with probably 90% chance we don't convert, and we're putting them back to them on our second straight three and out, tied at 17. Who knows how the rest of the game plays out and the way we ran the ball from there on out. Um, we maybe win, but, man, they would have had all the momentum with the football. But instead, somehow Deuce Vaughn runs between two tacklers and break. I'm not sure how he got out of it, but he did and picked up the first down. And then, like Jimmy said, we just kicked their tail from, from that point forward. I'm glad you brought up the Zettner punt because I forgot about that shank that he had. 16 yeah. yards was the one real – glaring mistake Zentner had besides that he was pretty solid especially in the kickoff game um but you know yeah and then because Nevada turned around and turned that into points like you guys just talked about um and that all happened in the third quarter and then the fourth quarter um on that first drive obviously they they get it back up <clears throat> to 24 to 17 next drive like you guys continue to say I continue to say this defense buckles down um, and and K State owned that ball in the fourth quarter compared to when Nevada owned it in the third quarter. But K State capitalized, and the defense capitalized as well, um, because Nevada was driving. They wanted to get that to tie it back up at 24. They they went for they went for it on fourth and four. Carson Strong tried to make that run for three yards. Um, how important was that stop to to make sure that Nevada doesn't doesn't turn this into another tie game and then we're looking at will howard having to go out here and make some more plays jimmy yeah that was that was huge that fourth down stop when uh, nevada went for it and you know uh strong is not known to be a runner and he really looked at looked like it on that play 
Because really, you know, all he had to do is – I understand quarterbacks protect themselves, but if it's fourth and four and you're going for it, you've got to get that extra yard with your big – what is he, six – Six two two third whatever size he is, he's a big, big dude. And it looked like he could have just barreled through for that first down if he really wanted to, but he kind of you know went down pretty softly. Had the ball in his chest, didn't try to reach out much. Um, and, and, you know, generally you don't teach guys to reach the ball out, but if it's fourth, fourth down and you're trying to get an extra yard, uh, you have nothing to lose really in that situation. So, um, but that was huge by the defense to step up, make a play, close. Um, but really, I mean, that's something we haven't talked about as much this year as when we've done these shows is how much better the defense is at closing and then tackling at the point of attack and how much, how, how few of missed tackles and tackles after contact we see from our opponents. And that was just another case of that. Um, and that's really been the impressive thing. I mean, what they ran 25 times for 27 yards for the game. I mean, that's the, to, to hold. And Nevada isn't some daunting rushing attack, but they're usually pretty effective just because you have to respect Carson Strong in that passing game and Dubs and and Turner and, and all the weapons he has. And to 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 dominate the run game like our defense did was just another sign of how how well they played. You know, and you know, Nevada had 11 snaps for 48 yards in the fourth quarter. We just really took their took them out of their game. They had one play of 24 yards, so. Uh, we we dominated the fourth quarter on defense as much as we did on offense, and just a really fun way to close out a game. Yeah, Nelly. I mean, how how cool is it to see you know this defense that's playing mostly you know defensive backs to counter Carson Strong's really good quarterback play, but still able to stop the run effectively. Um, I mean, I could point out a bunch of different guys that were big time. I mean, Daniel Green, Reggie Stubblefield was huge. Eli Huggins down low, um, just. How impressive is that to see this defense do this, even when in formations that they actually haven't really had to do in the first two games of the season? Yeah, and it's impressive because they've done it against three completely different offenses. I mean, Stanford is more of a, you know, um, pro style offense than, than the other three, more of a power football team. We stopped the run. SIU did quite a bit of few things differently. We stopped the run in the Nevada as a spread team. You're worried about the pass, and they, and we still stopped the run. And yeah, we including stacks, we held them to a negative 2.5 yards per carry in the fourth quarter, and and like Jimmy said, 1.1 overall. Um, so yeah, it's remarkable. If you look at it by quarter for the season, um, we're giving up 3.2 yards per rush in the first quarter, 2.1 yards per rush in the second quarter, 1.2 yards per rush in the third quarter and 0.3 yards per rush in the fourth quarter. Um, so, you know, I, I've been one who's wondered if, you know, how much we substitute, if that's a good thing or a bad thing, because, you know, I've at times thought, can our second string guys really be as good as our first string guys and then splitting snaps? Is that going to hurt us? But, you know, I, I would say that's a stat that points to, to the freshness or them keeping our defense fresh has, has certainly helped us throughout games. Absolutely. The depth there has been key and keeping guys fresh, hats to the ball. This defense has truly brought back that mob mentality um, that old K-State defense is used to, you know, always hang their hat on. So um, we are at, let's see, 20 – that was when it was 31-17 after, you know, K-State had, had that drive. Oh, no, I'm sorry. We are on this the, – the drive where they make it 31-17, 11 play – or did we go through that one already? 11 play, 62 yard drive, 609. Oh, yeah, this was the longest drive of the game. Most plays, they ate the clock up, went 62 yards. Will Howard made some passes. I mean, how impressed were you by Will Howard in this game? He didn't, you know, have a, a massive, you know, game through the air, but he, I, I'd like to call him surgical because he didn't make the mistakes. And in that fourth quarter, he was making some nice passes, some dink and dunks, but also some you know, over 10 yards. How impressed were you with him on that drive um, and throughout the whole game? I, I like that, you know, they they did a good job setting up uh, Will for success. Um, two of those passes on that drive were, were the bubble screens, again, to Brooks, which we ran, I think, five times in the game. And, uh, you know, he got the ball where it needed to be. Brooks, you know, got 12 yards on one and three on another. Um, 
and uh, both were successful plays by down and distance. Um, during that drive, we only had one negative play. We, we did have a, a loss of yards on a rush, but everything else gained three yards or more. And uh, we averaged, you know, on, the, on that drive, I think we ended up averaging over five yards per play, which five and a half yards per play, which you'll take any time. Good mix, again, of, of run schemes, of formations, of personnel groups, um, some spread stuff, some two tight end stuff. Um, mixed in the uh, inside dual run scheme um, with a few quarterback runs, with some jet sweeps, with a little bit of everything, probably one of the more diverse drives of the game. And, and as we've talked about, the offensive line just really set the tone and, and dominated um, on that drive to get the, the two-score lead, which really, at that point, you kind of felt pretty comfortable about where we are, were and how that game was going to turn out. Absolutely, because after that, no, yeah, Nevada doesn't score the rest of the game. Did you have more to say, Jimmy? I'm sorry. Okay. Um, yep. I, oh, no, I'm sorry. Nelly. Yeah. Um, and, and we've already complimented the O-line, and deservedly so. But, I, you know, I also want to compliment the, the receivers and, and tight ends. And, you know, I think it speaks to the unselfishness of this team, the culture of this team. You know, you got guys who aren't getting the ball the entire game, yet they're blocking their tails off. I mean, on one of those bubble screens, the Brooks, both Sammy Wheeler and Garber had had really good blocks. Um, Malik Knowles has, has blocked well all year. On the one run by Howard that got called back for a holding pen, penalty, Tyrone Howe blocked his guy clear to the sideline. I mean, it was just across the board. You had, had guys giving max max effort at blocking on, on the perimeter. And the rest of that, and the rest of the way, Nevada does not score. They stick with that 17, which is super impressive to see out of the defense holding this offense to that. K State gets another touchdown to really, you know, put the cherry on top um, after, you know, they stop Carson Strong um, on the 31 yard line, um, you know, a four and out. Uh, and K State takes it down, you know, the rest of that way, that 31 yard field, and, and gets it done with Will Howard and a couple of Joe Irvin runs. I thought Joe Irvin was really good this game as well. You know, 11 carries over 80 yards. Um, really, really good stuff from both backs there. I mean, I guess we, that's something I could ask you guys. Um, some people are asking for Jacardier Wright. Uh, is, is that really something that's what, – what, you, what is your mindset on that, Jimmy, thinking about the fact that Joe Irvin and Deuce Fawn really showed out this game? And I, I had forgotten – I mean, not forgotten about right, but it didn't seem like he was a necessity in this game with those two running very well. Yeah, I, 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 I understand maybe wanting to get him a carry or two, but um, it's also the, the point where um, at the end of the game, you know, people – some people were upset because he came in. He did come in the game, but he, he was kind of the lead block on a couple of Will Howard – power quarterback touchdown runs and maybe you give it to right there to give them to give them a touch but it's clear that the the best two guys are playing and and Wright has a role on the team um Vaughn ended up getting about half the carries uh, on the day Irvin got about 20 almost 25 percent of the carries so you're splitting those two and then and Howard got about 25 percent of the carries so you're really splitting up carries between Irvin Vaughn and and the quarterback um and then uh, you got Knowles on a jet sweep as well. So I, I'm not too, I'm not too worried. Um, I understand, you know, maybe durability. You want to, you want to keep guys healthy. But I, one thing I appreciate is, is they have said, you know, in the preseason we want to give on the ball 20 to 25 times a game, and they're doing that. I mean, besides the Stanford game where we only had 40 snaps, he's got 26 carries and 23 carries the last two games, and so. Uh, they're they're living up to that, but you know, and then then you get another ten carries to Urban, and I think that's a pretty good ratio. And then Wright hopefully can come in and get maybe three or four, and I think that's probably going to be the mix we see here on out if we see, you know, a sixty-five ish play game um, from our team. Now, part of that is too we ran the ball almost eighty percent of the time in this game, and I don't, <clears throat> I will say that that may not be sustainable. Um, even 70% run is, is, is tough, but you know, the way we're running the ball, um, says a lot, but we'll see it. We'll see it more. We're going to see a much more adept run defense this week in Oklahoma state Cowboys. So this week will be pretty telling about 
the direction we might need to go, especially without Skylar Thompson and, and how the offense is going to look against a, a defense that looks like they probably are a little bit tougher against the run than what we've seen so far. Nelly, earlier Jimmy said that he thinks that we might see a little bit of Jaron Lewis again um, against Oklahoma State. Uh, are, you, are you in the same line of thinking there? Um, both, you know, didn't really make many mistakes at all um, and both moved the ball a little bit, but Will Howard was a touch sharper. But I guess I wouldn't be surprised either if I saw both next week. No, it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, I guess the only variable could be was um, this is a uh, Saturday against Nevada was a home game and uh, next Saturday will be a road game. And, and while we're, Will Howard hasn't experienced uh, full stadiums yet, he has had that experience on the road where Lewis hasn't. Um, so that, that is another variable to consider. Um, so, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if Lewis got some time. But also, on the other hand, with it being uh, the first uh, road test of the season, it wouldn't surprise me if they went completely with the guy that had the experience in that, in that environment. This is where I want to give you guys the floor. You know, the last few minutes of this podcast, we always, you know, love all the statistics and, fa and uh, tidbits that you guys give us throughout the show. Um, but now if there's anything else you want to add at the end, Nelly, I'll let you start. I know you got some um, stuff you want to throw out there as far as uh, what we need to look out for in this Oklahoma State game. And then we'll go to Jimmy and let him finish up with anything else he wants to add for statistics from, from the season, from that last game, and going forward. Sounds good. I, I may through the week throw some more numbers on the board. I just I posted this afternoon um, some, some numbers. I'm looking at our, our third, third quarter woes and, and, and what that looks like. But, and I might post some more season numbers as the week goes along. But just a couple of thoughts on Oklahoma State and a couple of things I think may be keys. Um, offensively, um, as Jimmy already said, their run defense is much better than anything we've seen so far. And one reason for that is they're not afraid to play. I'm allowed to cover one and even co cover zero where there's no safety over the top and they're, they're bringing blitzers from, from all over the place. So, I mean, at some point in, in this game, Will Howard in the passing attack is going to have to make a couple of plays. And, and I'm not saying he's going to have to throw for 250 yards, but they're going to have to make a play um, here or there. And that just doesn't fall on Will Howard's shoulders. The, the O-line will have to hold up long enough against the blitz to give him time to deliver the football. And there's going to be a, be a receiver that has to defeat a one-on-one -on -one matchup. And then on the defensive side of the ball, you know, our, our safeties, especially against Stanford, really crashed hard. They ran to the football, ran into the box to help on the run. And with the way Oklahoma State ran the football um, last night, I mean, I'm sure that'll be a priority for us as well to stop the running game. So I, if I were Oklahoma State, I would look at running some RPOs um, to get our safeties running up into the box to help support the run and then throw the slant behind them. And so who knows if Spencer Sanders will be good enough to make those plays or not, but, but that's something that, that I would look out for on the defensive side of the ball. I love it, Nelly. Always love it. Now, Jimmy, on to you. Finish us out with um, – some just serenade us with some numbers, please. Well, I, I, I was just looking back on last year's game with Oklahoma State, and uh, K State did run the ball two thirds of the time against them last year with some pretty decent success. We averaged 5.3 yards of play, a, a run on them, 45% success rate. Um, uh, it is interesting, though, we've, we've talked a lot about how inside zone duo is our, our main scheme this year. Last year, we only averaged 1.7 yards. Hmm. run on that scheme and ran it seven times so it was not effective um, we were effective last year uh, running uh, inside power against them um, averaged almost five yards per snap 44 percent success rate and we were really good with the quarterback run game of course we had a big 69 yard run um, we ran the little quarterback trap inside quarterback trap several times um, and one of them, Howard, broke for 69 yards for that long touchdown, if you remember, last year. Um, and ended up averaging um, almost nine, almost 10 yards per run with the quarterback for the game, 57% success rate uh, on that. So um, <clears throat> we did run the ball a lot with Will Howard and had success against Oklahoma State last year uh, and, and threw the ball not great. Um, only a 38% success rate and average 6.8 yards per pass um, per pass play, uh, so attempt. So looking at that, um, there is hope that I think 
this is a much better K-State offense and a much better K-State offensive line against uh, probably a pretty similar Oklahoma State defense. Um, the, the big key, the question there, and, and uh, Nelly brought it up, this will be Will Howard's first true road game of his career. Uh, and for honestly, a lot of our guys, it's going to be the first true road game of their careers. And I don't know how excited Oklahoma State fans are right now. I mean, they did squeak out a win over Boise State, uh, but they have not really played well in their first few games. Um, I know a couple guys that that I coach with are Oklahoma State fans, and they're not real confident in their ability to beat us. And one of them even said he thinks that K State's going to kill Oklahoma State. I'm not. I'm not ready to go that far yet, but uh, this will be a good test. And I think of our next three games, this would be the one I would consider most winnable. And the weakest team we play after that, we have got Iowa State and Oklahoma, of course. So, um, <clears throat> looking to see how well. Uh, how well we can run the ball. Can we maintain a, a, a run rate where we run the ball two thirds or more of the time? And can we sustain the success we've seen so far this year, especially on inside zone duo, which we've run a lot. And last year we didn't run very well against Oklahoma state a lot. So those will be pretty telling things to watch. And will we feature the quarterback run game again, uh, like we did last year and will Howard had a really big day running the ball against Oklahoma state. Can he repeat that? So, those are things I'm looking forward to watching this week as we uh, get Oklahoma State again on the on the plus on a night game. Uh, the last time, the last time <laughs> we had that, Oklahoma State on the plus on a night game, I think it was <laughs> maybe one of their first uh, first showings on ESPN Plus, and it was a brutal broadcast. And, and they've, to their credit, they've gotten better <laughs> at the cast. That one also had the rain delay, if I remember right, two years ago. So. Yeah, it should did. be fun yeah. to watch, yep. and uh, this will be a big challenge. This this team wins this game, then then you're looking at a, a pretty excited fan base with the Oklahoma Sooners coming back. They've taken care of business three games through, um, beat a couple of really tough teams in um, Stanford and Nevada, and even Southern uh, SIU. I think Southern Illinois is also, I think, a, a solid FCS team. So they've taken care of business, gone through some adversity already this season. Um, it sounds like Will Howard should be able to feast on the ground against Oklahoma State, according to KSU underscore fan. Uh, corralling, you know, Spencer Sanders is going to be key. You know, one of you know more athletic quarterback than they've really faced so far this season. Um, SIU had some athleticism too, but I think Sanders will try to run even more. I mean, he'll try to pass too. So this defense is going to have to buckle down and get things done again. Um, and start start Big 12 playoff right with a win because you're right. This is one of the most winnable ones in the next three games, and it's something they need to get done. So always appreciate the time. Nelly, K, uh, you know, KSO underscore Nelson on Twitter, and Jimmy, KSU underscore fan on Twitter. Um, they're on the boards as well. Subscribe to KSO. Subscribe to our YouTube. You know, you're listening to this on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button if you really enjoyed this content. We, you know, we'll, we'll keep bringing this to you after every game of the season. So we always appreciate the time. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you, Nelly. You smart sons of guns, you. <laughs> Thank you, Flando. Tell your friends, Flando. Tell them. <laughs>